picture this. You're looking for a sporty commuter car or a Sunday fun machine. You're thinking German and you've shortlisted the Audi TT and Porsche Cayman. Both turbocharged, both from the same manufacturing group, but completely different. In this video, I'm going to put these two cars head to head to find out which one is the one to go for. I'm going to go around practicality, technology, performance and styling to find out which. Enjoy. Let's start with the TT. Hitting our streets back in 1998, the 2 plus 2 coupe or the two-seater roadster made its way into the heart of a lot of petrol heads. Fast forward to this facelift version and I think it's safe to say it's come a long way. Now this car is the Black Edition 45 TFSI Quattro S-Tronic. Yeah, a bit of a mouthful. It basically means it's got a two litre turbocharged engine producing 241 brake horsepower, 272 foot pound of torque, propelling itself from 0 to 62 in 5.1 seconds with the S-Tronic gearbox and Quattro all wheel drive. Now the TT still resembles that 1998 car, but it's had an update. At the front, we've got a really lovely design grille, black accent pieces for the black edition. We've also got these really cool looking LED lights with the daytime running lights. The front of the grille looks really angular, spot on. On a black edition, it normally comes with multi-spoke high gloss black alloys. This car's got upgraded twin five spoke 20 inch alloys that are diamond cut. They look pretty classy. We've also got black accent pieces, mirrors, privacy glass, side steps, and this is the first time Audi have put a fixed rear wing on a TT unless you go for the TTRS. But at the back, we've got again, more black pieces, the, the spoiler, the splitter. It's a really good looking back end to the car. I really like these lights and it has got the dynamic indicators that, that sweep. We've got central-ish tips. They look pretty good. I mean, it all just a really smart package, although, these things, these, both sides, I think Audi are looking for more angles, facelift, do something different, but yeah, they don't do anything, so a bit pointless. When Audi released this generation of TT, they said the dashboard looked like an aeroplane wing. And I can see it. They've got these air vents that look like the jet engines. It's got the curve of an aeroplane wing. I think it looks pretty cool. In the black edition, you have these full leather seats with the S-line embossed logo and the quilted leather stitching. Feels really nice. A nice place to be. They're manually adjustable, but you do have an electric lumbar support that you can move. In front of you, you have a 12.3 inch display, which is called their virtual cockpit. It's actually been out since 2014. And at that time, it was completely different to what Edda we'd seen before. Today, I still think it looks brilliant. I think it's a cut above the rest of the market. It's fantastic. The virtual cockpit gives you things like navigation, media, car settings, extended car settings. And it's all controlled through this wheel in the middle or the buttons on the steering wheel. You've also got CarPlay and Android Auto, but if I'm honest, it's quite fiddly to kind of get through the menus. I'm on Spotify and scrolling through, I, it's very difficult to get to the maps on the side. I haven't got like a, a shortcut button there. Or this one, I, it doesn't really, I want to go that way, but it doesn't really want to let me get there. So I have to kind of scroll through all the menus to get to my nav or my phone or something. The rest of the TT is very well put together. We've got soft touch plastics, obviously got leather on the seats. We've got a bang and awesome sound system, which looks nice and it's got some LED lights that help illuminate the cabin. We've got standard controls. We've fortunately also got lots of proper buttons, which helps when you're, you're driving. Uh, down the middle, we've got the S-Tronic gearbox actually, which is the, the double clutch automatic. And we've got this little wheel. Again, it's, it's all very Audi familiar, but in a nicely formatted way. And if you've jumped in an R8 before, you'll see the similarities. Now in 1998, this car was released as a, a 2 plus 2. Oh God. And now it is still a 2 plus 2. However, it's not what you call big in the back. Um, let me just get my foot around. Oh God. So it's, okay. it's all right getting in. 
<sighs> right there you yeah you see it's not great now i'll put the seat back so you know where i am so now i'm i'm not that i'm not massively tall i'm about five nine five ten but i can i can kind of fit in but then it's like where do you put your head so unless you're four foot ish it's not going to be a great ride but good news is you can pop these down because let's be honest who is actually using this in the back and then you can put things like golf clubs and and golf trolleys that's your thing so let's flip to the porsche in 1996 porsche released the two-seater roadster called the boxster the cayman followed suit in 2005. four generations on and this is what porsche have to offer the 718 Cayman. This particular one is the GTS from 2018. That gives you a two and a half litre turbocharged engine producing 360 brake horsepower, 310 foot pounds of torque, propelling this car from naught to 62 in 4.1 seconds with a double clutch gearbox and launch control. Now compared to so many sports cars of today, including the TT, the Porsche gives you this refined and stripped back look. It's got a lovely silhouette, curving lines, no fancy canards and extra splittery bits. So with that refined look, we have a simple sports design front splitter. We also have nice little canardy bits in the middle and a really simple design. We've got subtle daytime running lights and we've got this Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus, which gives you these four famous dots. On the side, we've got 20 inch Carrera S style black alloys. We've also got red calipers. Now in Porsche's world, you can't get a Cayman with red calipers unless it's an S upwards. So your friends will know you've done all right. You've got GTS logos, black air intakes, big wheels. It just all looks very nice. And at the back, we've got this deployable rear ring rather than like the TT. We've got century placed exhaust tips, the 718 Cayman GTS badge, but I think you can change that around however you want to. Again, I had a really classy place to look. Now it's worth mentioning that if you're looking to compare the TT more closely, then perhaps the base Cayman is the one that you should look at. That's got 300 horsepower with a 0-60 time of 4.9 seconds with the PDK. So before we go any further, what do we think of the outside of these two cars? We've got perhaps more angles, a more current look to the TT. The spoilers, the splitters, they just look more racy, I guess. Whereas the Cayman's got as I said, this refines silhouette that looks very Porsche, but very classy. It's tricky to tell. Let's jump in. Oh. We have these lovely sport seats in the Cayman. They just hug you very well. They've got Alcantara and leather, and they've got this little crayon, which is a color that they have in Porsche. Have crayon stitching just to give a little contrast. They hug very nicely. They're slightly more hugging than in a TT, but I guess this is always renowned for being more of a sports car. Ahead of me, I've got very simple clusters. Interior, it's very stripped back, it's very simple. It's not as tech focused as the TT. We've got these standard dials in the middle, but we have got a little digital one here, which goes through my different menus. On the left, we have a touch screen. And this is where actually the Porsche trumps the TT for me. I told you about how awkward sometimes a TT instrument can be. In here, we've got a lovely touch screen. So it's super simple. Yes, it does mean you have to take your eyes off the road, but I do the same in the TT. So good mark for Porsche. You've got things like Alcantara on the steering wheel, on the gator here. We've also got lovely other materials, leather on the dashboard, leather on the side here, more Alcantara, carbon fiber, a splattering of carbon fiber. I've never really been a massive fan of lots of carbon, but in here, appropriate amount, looks really nice. Groovy cup holders that haven't always Porsche that, that pop out, which are cool. Yeah, just a really nice place to be. So top chance the Porsche. Now, unlike the TT, the Porsche is a two seater, so no back seats. And that's probably because, unlike the TT, the engine is mounted right there in the middle. Not in the front, not in the back like a 911, but right there in the middle. What it does mean is inside you get a huge roar from behind your head, which I absolutely love. So, off the back of those interiors, comment below what you think you like the most. I really like that TT. It's really lovely inside. But the Porsche feels, although less techy, more driver focused. And with driving, let's jump in and go for a spin. Oh. 
come on. So starting with the TT and let's start with the position, how you feel in the car. Again, I love this cabin. It's really, really nice. So I'm already very comfortable in here. The seats are nice. They hug you very well. There's a little bit of movement compared to the Cayman. So actually you don't fit quite as snug, I guess, as that car. But it's still a very nice place to be. The seats are very lovely. The only thing I've noticed straight away is you kind of sit on top of the TT, if you know what I mean. Like the seat feels like you're a little bit propped up. I feel like it should be lower down. Now this is this is l as low as the car can go in terms of like the seat. So I think it just needs to almost be like about what, that much fitted lower to the ground to just give you that slightly lower feel like you're in line with the car. But perhaps that's because of the all-wheel drive system. I don't know. Now the two litre turbo in this car, getting you from naught to 62 in just around five seconds is very important. Impressive. It's a fizzy little engine, it wants you to go. Now, realistically, you'll probably see mid 30s on miles per gallon. Go a little bit faster, and you'll see that drop to around 30. And if you go on a motorway cruise, you'll probably get into the 40s if you're lucky. Now, if you're looking to get closer to the GTS, then the TTRS is the one to go for. It has 400 horsepower with a 0 60 time of 3.7 seconds. But I must say, this two litre is blimming quick. TTRS, fantastic. Soundtrack, unbelievable. Brilliantly fast. But this setup, two litre petrol, all wheel drive, oh, every day, it's just unbeatable. Now, one thing I get with the TT is so stable. It feels that you can put your power down anytime you want to through any bend at any speed and it will get you around. It's, it's just such a confidence filling car and I think that's why the everyday commuter side, this would probably be brilliant. Now bear with me while I get a little bit technical. The Audi Quattro system, which is their all wheel drive system, is able to put 50% of the power to the rear wheels instantaneously. It uses something called its multi-plate clutch technology. I mean, God knows what that means, but I can tell you it's very bloody good. Now changing through this S-Tronic gearbox using either the gear stick in manual or these paddles is very, very enjoyable. Oh. And I must admit, the sound of this two litre, I'm impressed. I mean, I, you know, I thought it'd be a bit muted, cars nowadays are, but it's got a nice little fizz to it. Every so often a little pop. Oh, and Quattro, honestly, God, give you so much confidence to use this car and throw it about. Now, before we jump in the Cayman, let's talk price. The basic car starts from 34,000 and the TTRS jumps to 58,000. Now, if you wanna go for the black edition like this car with the engine and gearbox to match, you'll be looking at around 42,000 pounds. What do you think? Good value for money? Let me know below. I do love how the Cayman feels to drive. Welcome inside and to start with, just ignoring this dated interior for a second, the Cayman just feels so much more sporty, driver focused, you're in line, you feel like you're one with the car, you are kind of in it. This two and a half litre turbocharged engine producing 360 brake horsepower gets you from 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds. Let's go. Oh, God, this is good. <laughs> so, yeah, so quick. It's a little squirrely. Again, all the power going to the rear wheels from that mid-mounted engine. But I love that. I've just changed Mitchens on this car, and they do grip a lot better than the Pirellis that were on previously. But, oh, it's so good. Now, if you go for the new current GTS, you will get a four litre naturally aspirated car with 400 horsepower. But don't worry, it's only 0.1 of a second quicker from 0 to 62 than this car. 
Now, I need to address the elephant in the room, price. This car starts from 47,700 pounds, and the new GTS is 68,700 pounds. Yeah. And Porsche has this quirk, let's say, of not really including many options as standard. Things like multi-function steering wheels, cruise control. Yeah, you're gonna have to select them on the options list. Now this car revs to just over 7,000 RPM. Oh! Now, arguably, a lot of people say that the previous generation Cayman, the 981, which was a naturally aspirated car, sounds a lot better. Let me know what you think. Now, we cannot ignore the fact that this car, unlike the TT, is mid-engined. Now, that gives this car this poise, this balance. It kind of teeters around the middle of the car, and that gives the car such a lively driving style. Jeremy Clarkson's very famous for saying that the Porsche Cayman is probably one of the best handling cars around, and it is. It's brilliant. It's, it's, just, it's just you've got to drive one to know what it feels like. Now, you know, compared to the TT, which is perhaps a little bit safer, maybe more usable every day, say, this car is just so much more poised and dynamic that, yeah, it's just so much more exhilarating to drive, especially with that Sunday fun day. Now, the Cayman's cabin is quite noisy, uh, it's probably more noisy than the TT, but if I'm honest, with this engine, this soundtrack, the revs, I don't care. Given that the Cayman isn't quite as practical as the TT, it's no surprise to see that the economy isn't as good either. Now this car is gonna see around 27 miles per gallon on average, with low teens if you're going for a blast, and around 31, 32 on a motorway cruise. Now if you compare the Black Edition TT to the base Cayman, you'll still be saving yourself 5,000 pounds. And if you wanna go for the TT RS, compared to the GTS, you'll be saving yourself 10,000 pounds. Let me know what you think below. Is it good value for money? Now at the start of this video, I said you might be looking for a everyday sporty commuter or a Sunday fun machine. That's exactly what these two cars are. The Audi TT is tech driven, it's all wheel drive, it's a safe place to be. And so for that everyday commuter car, it's brilliant. The Porsche is more on the edge. It's more visceral, it gives you that experience that you're always kind of close to going sideways. And I love that. And that's perhaps what you want from a Sunday fun machine. You know what, look at it like this. The Audi TT is like my iPhone. It can tell me the time and the date and weather and TikTok. But the Porsche is like my watch. It just tells me the time. It's that beautiful simplicity, which is why I'm gonna be getting into the Porsche and spending the rest of my Sunday having a blast. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe, see plenty of future videos like this to come. But for now, I'll see you soon.